I wanted a standalone message because I was going to be traveling. And I thought, boy, this is a good topic for me. And I've worked on it over the years, and I'd like to share it with you today. Amen? Come on. Let's see what we can find. I call it real fishing. Say that with me. Real fishing. How many flat out you love to fish? Can I see your hand? You just flat out love to fish. Amen. Is that a good thing? Come on. How many like being down by the water? You like doing that? Being by the water or something like that? Yes. Let's talk about real fishing today. We're going to talk about it. You think, well, man, I thought I was coming to church. He's going to talk about fishing. Oh, you're going to learn a little bit of both today about how to catch fish and how to catch men and women for Christ. Amen? This is a great message. It's fun. Get ready. Here we go. Now, fishing ain't a fancy sport. You may as well forget it. If you want to be a fisherman, you got to lose all that fanciness. Oh, I don't want to touch this. I don't want to do it. Well, it ain't going to work for you then, okay? Say, so, all right? Got to lose all that. Smelly fish, bloody mess, rough waters, burning hot sun, disappointment. Oh, fatigue. I'm wore out. Junk in your cast net. It's off. You got to clean it out. Rigging your poles. It's work, man. Cleaning your stinking boat when you get home. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? I know you feel sorry for me, right? I actually don't fish a lot now. Mitch loves it. Loves, loves, loves it. He has his own uh, twin V kind of boat, and it'll go into low water. He loves it. Ain't fancy, but to him, it's a cat's meow. Amen? So he came by that honest, his granddaddy and me. We love fishing. Now, fishing is very exciting, though. Oh, you know, I don't like fishing. You're going to like it when I get done with you. Here we go. Come on. It's a very exciting thing to do, the anticipation. You just don't know what's on the other end, especially here in Florida. How many ever caught something big? You didn't know about I me. Mean, something big. You're like, whoa, I caught something big. How many th think you caught something big? You don't know what it was. <laughs> there you go. The anticipation. The unknown, the bite. Got one. Oh, oh, I had a bite. I had a bite. Oh, oh. The fight. Ooh, I've caught tarpon. How many ever caught some tarpon? Oh, man, if you haven't gone tarpon fishing, you need to go tarpon fishing. To catch a fish that jumps out of the water on the back of its tail that's six to eight feet long at times, are you kidding me? It's so big to catch tarpon, the captain has to move the boat when you get him on. That's, I got it, and, if it, and we catch them at night. And so the light comes on. Boop, fish on. What does the light come on for? To let other boats know, we're moving. You better get out of our way. And you got a fish on. That thing's huge. You don't see him. And that fight, and it'll about break your arm. Is that true? Yes or no? Wear you out. Craziness. And then the catch, to see what you got. Oh, and don't forget this part, the what? Oh, the bragging. And the fish always get bigger, 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 bigger. It's what we do. And then, come on, nothing like eating fresh fish. Now, it's work, though. you got to clean them. It's a mess. But it's so much better than going down to the store and paying whoever so much money when you can do it yourself. And you, can catch them. And you live right there where you can do it. Amen? You live right where you can fish. It's incredible. And then the enjoyment. The satisfaction out of it, and this is huge for me, the friendships, the friendships, to fish, to fish with somebody and have that time on the water. You talk about relationships getting stronger and growing. It's a good thing. So today we're going to learn how to fish from the master, and Gary ain't him. I've learned from him. I have learned to love people because of Jesus. I didn't grow up like, you love people, little boy. I didn't hear that. I grew up cussing people. And people that know, I, I see you here, my brother back here from the North Carolina area. You know a little bit about Rockingham. We didn't grow up in Rockingham being little saints. <laughs> it didn't happen. Amen. So I didn't grow up knowing how to love people. But Jesus has taught me. Y'all hear me today, yes or no? And see, I love you. And you love me. I think I'm one of the few preachers you'll ever hear stand on the stage say, I love you. And, but follow it up with this. You love me. Because I love you. I feel your love back to me. Did you hear me, yes or no? 
You matter to me. But I matter to you. I wish every preacher in America could get to that place. Because they're lonely, they're broken, it's hard. But it's not near as hard when you love those people and realize those people love you. Not long ago, Mitch was talking to me. And I'm sorry to bring him up, but it's what I do. I said, Mitch, I watched him do practice one night. He did such a good job. And the team loved him. And he's laughing and he's having fun. And I talked to him later. I said, man, you did such a good job. I said, that same way you talk to them, you can talk to them. And he said to me, I don't feel worthy. I feel guilty. It broke my heart. I said, Mitch, they will love you like they love me. It's not an easy thing to get to, though, guys. Did you hear me? And, uh, but I see, and, and everybody's their own personality. His personality is not my personality, right? So we're just different. But if you can never get to a place where you can hear this message clear today, it'll change your life. Amen? Let's learn from the fisherman, Jesus. Jesus is called master many times in the Bible, and we're going to fly now. He's called master. Master doesn't mean slave owner. It's not what it means. Master in the Bible means wise teacher. Say that with me. Wise teacher. That's why they called him master. It also means one who speaks with authority. Jesus spoke with authority. It means one who knows what he's talking about. Jesus came to a planet... And in Jerusalem with, relig with, with religious leaders who didn't know what they were talking about. Okay? His father's house had been made a den of thieves. Is that what he said? Absolutely. Did he overthrow the tables and get ticked off? Yes, he did. Okay? So they didn't know what they were. They, oh, they looked the part, but they didn't know what they were talking about. Okay? Jesus called Peter and his brother Andrew to do what? Yeah, in case you, where are you going with this fishing message? Well, it's in the Bible. That's what I'm doing. We're going to just be in the Bible. Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee. By the way, it's a six by 13 mile lake. It's the Sea of Galilee. It's a lake. It's called Lake Gennesaret. I've been on it probably a dozen times. I've eaten fish right out of it. It's a real place. When you read the Bible, don't think this is fairy tale. This is the real deal, real things, real people, real places. He's walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were what? Fishers. And he says unto them, say it with me, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's what my message is about today. Fishing for people. Catching people for the Lord. And they straightway, what did these, these boys do? They left their what? And they followed the Lord. Now these were fishermen. Jesus didn't choose the religious to follow him. He's happy to have religious folk following him. But he, want, he doesn't want them to follow him in, in religion. He wants them to follow him in relationship. Amen? And so he called these fishermen. And these boys jumped at the chance to go with this man called Jesus. And to do what he said. Peter knew that he had met the who? Master? Peter was great at what he did. Are you kidding me? He was a master fisherman. But boy, when he met Jesus, he knew, I've met the master caster. Nobody can throw a net like Jesus. It's funny, I'm giving this message today, and I like to stop at yard sales when I feel like it. I'll do it all the time. I like stuff free, honestly, by the road. That's my favorite thing to do. Because then I don't have to give you nothing for it, and it's mine, okay? I did that yesterday. I wanted a couple of stops. I'm having some friends come down to a house I have, and we're going to minister to them and love on them because they need it right now. But I want to make sure they know where to park. So I just want me some car stops. You know what I'm talking about? I was thinking about it, never said it to nobody. Did you know I'm going by the trash yesterday and found two of them? 
I hauled them suckers in the back of my truck. That's the kind of sale I like. But I was at, uh, I was at, the, uh, at a yard sale yesterday, and a guy had a cast net. It's just, you don't see those that often. It was a homemade cast net by a pro. Thing cost $400. Ten footer, Mitch. Did not get it. He wanted $40. I couldn't do it. I thought about you. He wanted $40. I'm like, $40? He said, it costs $400. I said, yeah, but you're asking $40. I should have got it, but that boy threw that net and he threw it like silk. Which I feel bad. Now listen, he's really upset. <laughs> so Peter knew how to throw the net. Now listen, listen what, here's how Peter knew he would follow Jesus. And Jesus entered into one of the ships, which was Simon. And he prayed him or requested Peter that he would thrust out a little from land. And Jesus was able to use Peter's boat and talk to the folk that were on the shore. He sat there and he taught the people from the ship. And when he had left speaking, so Simon and Peter got to hear Jesus talk to people and love on people. But before they came back to land, Jesus said, Hey boys, throw the net. Keep looking. Push. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we've done, done this all night long. We ain't caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, because I've been watching you talk to these people about, the, about God and about truth. Because you're saying it, I'm pretty impressed with you. I'm going to throw that net. And when Peter threw that net, they enclosed such a great multitude of fish. Say it with me. That their net what? Broke. Boy, that's, that's some doing right there, ain't it? And they beckoned under their partners, which were in another ship, or another boat. That's, these are just boats. And they, they said, help, help, help. Our net's breaking. We got so many fish, we can't get. And it filled both of the boats that their boats were so full, they started to sink. Do you think you'd be impressed with Jesus if you saw that? Yes or no? Come on, he's our teacher today. And when Simon Peter saw it, and this is not normal for fishermen, they're tough people. Simon Peter fell on his knees. He heard him talk. And he watched him do what he did with those nets. And he fell down on his knees and he said, I'm a sinful man. Say it with me. Oh, Simon got something, didn't he? For he was astonished. And all that were with him, everybody that saw Jesus do all this, they were astonished at the drought of the fish that were taken. But don't miss that he had been talking too. They were astonished with his word too. Y'all hear me? Yes or no? So, we're talking real fishing today. Those are great stories. Let's talk about it. Let's learn from the master on how to be a fisher of men. You're not going to sleep on me, are you? This ain't some fishing TV show. Wake up. Let's go. Okay, come on. But if you want to have a good Sunday afternoon or sometime, just turn on a fishing show and relax. Amen. Come on. Number one, how do I do it? How do I learn, Jesus, to catch people? How do I do it? The master caster principle, I call it. Number one, it's the master caster principle. Jesus said, say it with me, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Keep reading with me. And the second is like unto it. Say it with me. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments, loving God and loving people, loving Jesus, loving people, hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, so what's the master caster principle? How am I going to catch people for the Lord? How are we going to build this church strong? We're just getting started, guys. We already had, we, week after week, we're seeing our attendance break last year and the year before. Amen? Now, but there's lots of seats. Don't, don't let that discourage you. They don't fill up, baby. Y'all hear me say. Now it's going to fill up a little bit in the season. But we want, after the season, for them to be more full. Amen? Say that's the plan here. How are we going to do it? We're going to listen to Jesus. That's what we're going to do. 
Amen? Not some fancy fella going to come in here and grow your church. We don't need some fancy fella. We've got Jesus. And we got eyeballs and we got a brain and we can read and we can learn. And I've been doing this for a while. I think we can do it. Amen. Say, we're just getting started. Say that with me. We're just getting. We ain't been in the building but a year. And half of this year we're just fixing stuff and finishing stuff. We just moved our Bible studies on campus. That's happening this week. Amen. We just started a youth group a month ago. The middle school. We're just getting started. Amen. You watch. You watch. But don't just watch. Do and learn today. So love the Lord and love people. That is the master caster principle. This is the bottom line from Jesus. If you want to catch people, if you want to grow a church as in winning souls and seeing people saved and their lives change, not just numbers, but seeing people's lives change, this is what we've got to do. Some scripture. We love him because he first loved us. You hear me say that all the time. Because it's in the Bible. He said unto them, go to all the world and preach the gospel to every what? Everybody. Period. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This whole principle, catching men, it's, a, it's His command to us, but it must be based on love, loving Him and loving those people. For the Son of Man, Jesus came to do what? To seek and to save who? Lost people. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because Jesus laid down His life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for who? For our brothers and sisters. This is God's call on our life. Well, you're a preacher, Gary. I'm not. This is God's call. Was Peter a preacher? Yes or no? He was not a preacher. He was a fisherman. Blew his mind. And Jesus didn't start him out. You're going to preach Monday night, Peter. He didn't do any of that. He said, shut up and follow me. And I'm going to teach you. And Peter became a great preacher for God. Soul winner for God. We all need to be doing this. Y'all hear me yes or no? If it's our children, our friends, our family, they need to know the Lord. We don't want those people to perish because we were pitiful. And we didn't stand up to the plate and do what we can do. Amen? Come on. Let's do it, guys. This is important. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and He sent His Son to be the propitiation or sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love who? One another. And guys, our one another is our town. Our one another is Inglewood. Our one another is our family and our friends. Our one another is the people down at the grocery store. This is, our, we, this is our people, guys. Yes or no? This is my town. Why do I say that? I say that to keep myself focused, not arrogant. It's my town. I do it to keep me focused, to not, to not get my feet wanting to go some other town, but not getting me to want to leave and go to some other church. You hear me? How about you? Maybe you're not happy with this city. Maybe you'd be a lot more happy if you took ownership and claimed it for the Lord. It's my town. It's my town. These are my people. Amen? Love them, man. That's principle number one. So the master caster principle is to love Jesus Christ and to love who? People. So when you hear at fellowship, what's y'all, what's y'all, what do y'all believe? Well, we believe in loving Jesus and loving people. Well, where'd you get it from? Mm, uh, the Bible. Amen? Say I think it's crystal clear, don't we? Some churches you go to, they got something a mile long. And I don't know about you, my head don't do mile long. Can you cut to the chase and tell me what you're about? We're about loving Jesus Christ here. But we're also about loving you and people. Ugly ain't allowed here. You got that? I'm talking about being ugly to people. You hear me, yes or no? Can we praise the Lord? Come on, ain't allowed here. Come on, ain't allowed here. Putting people down, looking down your nose, I'm better than you. No, you ain't. We're all sinners. The ground's level at the cross, baby. Amen. Say. All right? So that's who we are. That's who our church is. And we're just getting started, guys. So that's the, that's the principle. Now, the position. What's the master caster of position? Here it is. Then spoke Jesus to the multitude, to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sat in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid, you observe, that observe and do. But do not after the Pharisees' works, because they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens grievous to be borne. They lay them on men's shoulders, 
these religious teachers full of themselves. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. They won't lift a finger. But all their works they do to be what? Say it with me. Seen of men. They make broad phylacteries. These are boxes they put scriptures in and, and plat them on their head. Well, I can see you coming a mile down the road. They made broad, not just little ones. They're taught in the scriptures in the Old Testament. They make big ones. Let's put a big box on our head. If it was me, I'd laugh at him. I'd go, that guy's got a big box on his head. And they enlarged the borders of their garments. They were to make their garments certain ways, but that won't good enough. They wanted to make them big so you could see them coming a mile away and bells on them clinging, clanging, clanging. Here comes Mr. Christian man. They love the uppermost, they love the rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues. They like to set up the high. So everybody down there could do what? Look at them. And greetings in the markets to be called of men. Rabbi, Rabbi, they love that. Rabbi, Rabbi, oh, yes, yes, Rabbi, Rabbi, that's who I am. Try that and see if you can build you a church. <laughs> this is the planet he came to, Jesus. This is what he came, he's born into this. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. Who's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Guys, I am no different than you. If you've had a bad, evil, wicked thought, I bet you I've had it too. If you've thought about committing sin, or even committing the sin. I probably have done it too. And if I didn't, I probably wanted to. What does that mean? I'm a terrible person. I'm just like you. Hello, yes or no? We're both screwed up. He ain't. He's the master. We learn from him. Okay? Don't put me up. Somebody's got to do my job. I'm just the one doing it. Okay? Not to be put up. I think if I ever do that in my life, I think I will lose the feeling that I have of you loving me. And I wouldn't give that up for nothing. You hear me? Yes or no? It's a beautiful thing. Call no man your father on this earth. wonder what people are doing when they read the Bible. They must not read it. Don't call me father. I'm a pastor. That's what I do for a living. I don't have to be called Pastor Gary. You can call me Gary. People call me Pastor. It's fine. Prefer not to be called Reverend because I'm not very reverent at times. <laughs> Maybe I'd be more reverent if you would call me Reverend. <laughs> I don't know. Let's not go there. How about it? Neither be ye called Master, for you've got one Master, and his name is who? Jesus. Okay? So, let's keep reading. So that's the way you don't do it. But the greatest among you shall be your what? Say servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be brought low. So you don't want to put yourself up high because you're going to have a big crash one day. But he that does what? Is going to be what? See, that's what God's looking for. We're talking about the position. How do you catch people for Christ? Keep looking, Raj. Push me. Thank you. How do you do it? What's the position of a person who wants to, to reach people for Christ? Humble yourself as a what? Say it with me. Humble yourself as a... You want to reach this town for Christ? You serve the people of this town. I'm going to tell you, when I go to the school, I'm not putting myself up, I'm not. I'm just telling you life. When I go to the school to help with the ball team, A, I don't think i got a lot of time to do that. That's number one, but that's beside the point. But when I go, I feel foolish. I do. I just feel foolish sometimes. I'm going, I'm standing around. I'm not giving a lot of input on how they do plays or anything. I'm there supporting the coaches. Now on game night, I'm really loud on the sidelines and I feel like I got more job to do, you know, motivating players and let's go get your head in the game. I do that. But what I'm saying is, what keeps me doing it 
It's humbling myself. It's the right thing to do, Gary, to go to that ball field, to stand with those kids, to talk to them, to encourage those coaches. It's the right thing to do. But do I want to do it? Not really. There's times I don't. But I know that it's right to humble myself. Are y'all listening or not? To humble myself. And that's just one little example. I'm just trying to give you examples. How do you be a servant? You do that with people. Well, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. How about just hush and do it anyway? How about that? Say. How about serve that neighbor? Amen. Yes or no? How about that chance to help somebody? You do. Well, I don't got time. I don't feel like it. They should do it themselves. Well, how about you do it? Maybe you'll win them to Christ. Maybe you'll see them in heaven one day. Maybe they won't burn in a devil's hell because you, you humbled yourself a little bit. How about that? Think that way. Yes or no? That's what we're talking about. Keep looking. This is how you get positioned to catch men. You ain't caught nobody yet. You've learned the principle. Love the Lord. Love people. You've learned now the position. If I'm going to reach people for Christ, I'm going to do it from a position that's low, not high. Amen, say. Okay, keep going. Lights are flashing on me. Some stories. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up. He tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This is a religious leader, lawyer, religious and political, all that kind of stuff. He said, excuse me, back it up. He said unto him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, your neighbor as yourself. He said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and you'll live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, Say this part with me. Who is my... He's a smart mouth, that's what this guy is. He's trying to tempt Jesus and trick Jesus. He's not trying to learn how to catch people at all. And Jesus said, well, I'll tell you a story. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves, which stripped him of his clothes and wounded him, beat the snot out of him, left him for dead on the side of the road. And by chance, there came a, a priest, by the way. And when he saw him, he walked on the other side of the street. Didn't help him. And there's a Levite. This is somebody who writes the scriptures and a very spiritual person, supposedly. When he went by that place, he came and looked on him. Well, look at that. Somebody dead almost in the ditch and just kept on walking. Come on. But a certain Samaritan, by the way, a Samaritan was considered a dog by the Jewish religious people, half-breed, a no-good, a nobody that couldn't even be saved, couldn't even have a relationship with God, they thought. They were eternally doomed to hell. So here's a guy that's like a no-good person, seemingly. As he journeyed, he came where this person who had been beat half to death, when he saw him, he had what on him? I guess no matter what you've done in your life, you can catch people for Christ. Quit putting yourself down. You can do this. It's an excuse from the devil so that people end up being lost. So he went to him. He bound up his wounds. He put oil and wine on it. Did what he could. He set him on his own animal. He brought him to a hotel place. He took care of him. On the morrow when he departed, he took out money. He gave to the man, the host there. He said, take care of him and whatever you spend more, when I come back, I'm going to pay you. Whatever it is. I love this guy. Which now of these three do you think was his neighbor? Was neighbor unto the man that fell among the thieves. And the smart aleck guy that's trying to trick Jesus said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said, well, how about you go and do that then? Anybody that didn't think Jesus was tough, you're not reading the Bible I'm reading. I don't see him going, well, now you go ahead and do that, my dear brother. No, no, I think he's about this close to his nose. So how about you go ahead and do that then? Amen. Humble yourself. How do you do that? Don't justify yourself, but show mercy to people. Don't justify why you don't care. Don't justify why you don't help people. Don't justify why you don't go out of your way. Don't justify why you're not kind. Don't justify stuff like that. Say, I'm wrong. Humble yourself. We're talking about if you want to fish. Now, if you don't want to fish, that's up to you. A leper. And as he entered a certain village, there met 
Jesus ten men that were lepers, full of just disease and pus and sores and nastiness that you can't even imagine. And they're standing afar off because that's where they made them stay, called leper colonies and things. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Look at us. And when he saw them, most people wouldn't even speak to them. He said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now, Jesus had a sense of humor. Because they're not supposed to be around any of this nastiness, these priests. It's even forbidden in the law to be next to an unclean person. They took this to the hilt, though. <laughs> go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass as they went their way, though. As they started doing what Jesus told them to do. Here they were probably scared to death. We can't go. They'll, they'll throw us out. They'll treat us like crap. Excuse my language. Got me? But as they obeyed and they just started walking that way, all nasty. The Bible says they were what? <laughs> Can you imagine walking along and just seeing that mess heal up and it ain't on you no more? Oh, man. And one of them, say one. When he was healed, all ten healed. Only one turned back with a loud voice and glorified the Lord. That's how pitiful we are, guys. In our own strength, unless we humble ourselves, we're still so full of ourselves even when God has blessed us like he has in this country. And yet we gripe. Y'all hear me? We're talking about how you reach people. This man, one, fell down on his knees, down on his face, rather, at Jesus' feet. He gave him thanks. And guess what that man was? I'm hearing something. I'm hearing that sinners make really good fishermen. I'm hearing that lost people, not religious people, make the best fishermen. Thank God I was lost. I tell people, I'm glad I was lost because I got saved from something. I know I was lost and now I'm found. Amen? Come on, do you know that? If you grew up in a Christian home and you say, well, I never really knew about that. Well, just see yourself dangling over a devil's hell then. That's what God saved you from. And that'll make you get on your face before him and praise him. Amen? Come on. And Jesus answering and said, were there not ten that were cleansed? Where are the nine? I'm not saying humbling yourself is going to be easy. But if you'll humble yourself, you can be a fisherman for the Lord. Be one of the ten. Turn around and praise God and give Him thanks. Push me, Raj. Thank you, buddy. Bible says He gives more grace, wherefore He says God resists the who, but gives grace to the who. Humble. It's all through the Bible. Say that with me out loud. Stay low and be. One more time. Stay low and be. I found very few people that will turn away a servant. I found very few people that will refuse to hear a message coming from somebody who's humble. You hear me? Now they'll turn you away in a heartbeat if you fool yourself. But if you go forth humble, doing and helping and serving and not wanting nothing in return, not coming across as arrogant or better than them, ringing you little bells or whatever you got, box on your head, they'll probably like you. What's the personality? We got the principle, we got the position now. What's the personality? The master caster personality. First of all, what it ain't. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and he taught them. The scribes and Pharisees, there they are again. The ones that think highly of themselves. They brought in a woman who was taken in what? Adultery. They set her in the middle. And they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. I mean, we pulled her right out of the mess, right there. Now Moses in the law commanded us that she should be stoned. What do you say? Can you imagine having to be Jesus and live with this mess? And they said, this they said, tempting him. Tempting him that they might have what? To do what to him? They didn't care about that woman. They didn't care about Jesus. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote something in the ground, in the dirt. I'm going to ask him one day, what'd you write? What'd you write? I don't think it was very nice. 
Or it might be like, please don't let me zap them with lightning. <laughs> Keep going. Push. So, anyway, that's what you don't do, what those people did. That's not the personality you want. Standing in judgment, you're a sinner, I'm better than you, she should be stoned. Got it? Yes or no? That's what you don't do. What you do, though, is be what? Be what? And be what? Be real and genuine. Let's keep looking. See, the Pharisees were religious phonies. And I hate to tell you this, guys. That's what the Inglewood community, without even knowing me, if they don't know me, if they get to know me, we get along good. But they're going to think that we're religious phonies here at Fellowship Church. Why? Because that's what the world thinks. And they've got good reason to think that. Hear me. Yes or no? i got to just turn on TV and see fake, 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 la, 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 la. And they're just going to paint us with this brush. Not all of it's fake on TV. I know that. But much of it is. You hear me or not? Whether you want to believe it or not. See, they were phonies. And you know what phonies do? Phonies are good at doing what? Say it with me. We're going to win the Inglewood for Christ if we do this. You ain't going to do nothing. Ain't going to work. These Pharisees were leaders, but not when it came to what? <laughs> they didn't know jack squat about. They had to control the people. That's how they kept their crowd. That's how they kept their money. Control, control, control. They were master caster what? Phonies. My words, they were would-be lookalikes. How to detect phony fisher folk. My message, here we go. They talk the right talk. Yeah. Their attitude is judgmental. Keep looking. Oh, and by the way, you never catch fish by talking bad about them. <laughs> Try that when you go. Be honest. How many have been fishing before and you actually cussed the fish? Let me see your hand. I know, I knew your hands were going up. Did it help? No. They're more, we're talking about phony fisher folk. They're more interested in talking than showing mercy. You ever heard just shut up and fish? They say I and we a lot and list their pedigree and background experience. And I went to school here and this is what I've done and we've done this and we've done that. Fish don't care. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, some of the worst fishermen I've ever fished with were some of the most educated, wealthy people on the planet. And if you got money, and you got a big old education, believe it or not, I got a college education there too. I know it's hard to believe, but anyway, you'd be wise to find you some old fishermen around here that maybe don't talk good English if you really want to learn how to fish. Just a little advice to you. So this is, they just didn't do it right. They were phonies. But I want you to look at Jesus, how he did it. So when they continued asking him, the woman caught in adultery, Jesus said, you without sin cast the first stone. How about you standing up for somebody next time somebody's putting them down? How about you next time when you see a friend putting themselves down and thinking they don't matter and they're just crap and they have no value. And that's what people think, guys. How about you step in and you start building them up a little bit? Amen? Come on. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground again. He's struggling, Jesus is. I think he's struggling right here. I'm made in his image and I want to hit people in the mouth. I think he does too sometimes. I do. He was on this planet. It was not easy. And they which heard it being convicted, these phonies were being convicted by their conscience. They went out one by one, beginning at the oldest and to the last. That was nice. And Jesus was left alone with the woman. And Jesus lifted up himself and he saw nobody but the woman. 
He said, woman, where are your accusers now? Has anybody condemned you? Did you get hit in the head with a rock yet? And she said, no man, Lord. Say that last part with me. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He's not putting a check on adultery. It's horrible. It's despicable. It kills people. hurts families. But do they need love? Yes or no? And he didn't encourage her to keep that pattern of life. You follow me. Don't do that. You're clean. You can be clean and have a great life. Amen? Yes or no? This is, who I, this is who I want to be like. I want to be like the master. Amen? Real genuine old-time fishermen usually don't do a lot of talking or bragging about their pedigree or whatever. Just push. We're going to be done here now. Do you know what they do? You know what real fishermen do? Say it loud. They walk. And they usually catch something. Now, isn't that amazing? I know I'm back and forth on fishing in real life, but I think you're getting it. Real people attract others. One of the best things anybody can ever say about me. Had a recent set yesterday. Max, are you here somewhere in the building? Where you at? Back here. Max, years ago, I met with Max over lunch. A lot of problems he was going through. I didn't realize it till his testimony yesterday before a group of men. Max stood up and said, when I left Pastor Gary, I said to myself, there's a real man. He's real. Two years later, Max receives Christ. Amen? Not because of me, but I was part of that. Amen? Real people attract other people. Think about it. You want to go see somebody? To, oh, we're driving eight hours to go see a phony. You want to do that? Say. Real people are what? Positives. And I get negative. So I kind of keep working on this. Phonies repel others. They repel them. Phonies are what? You're with them and you go, oh my gosh, I can't wait to leave. So glad we left. We don't want that to happen here at Fellowship, even though Satan's always working. This is good before season comes and this place fills up. We're just having us a good talk today. Amen? Come on. Phonies usually want to show you how to do it, but they really can't do it. Just all talk. Real genuine fishermen usually don't tell you how to do it. You know what they do? If you watch them long enough, You'll see them do it. Amen? Come on. Catching folks is more walk than talk. It's more relationship and less what? My word. Religiosity. Why has somebody got to be a Christian for you to be their friend? Why can't the guy down the street or wherever he's at, ain't he worth your kindness? You, want to, you don't want to get yourself dirty or something? It's crazy. I love the lost. Did you know when I went through my struggle of being hurt, a lot of pain, a few years ago killed me? You know some of the, my best encourager were, encouragers in Inglewood were lost people? I would go to one restaurant, this woman, at Mama's. I'll go ahead and tell you it was Mama's. And the owner of Mama's, I'd walk in defeated, down, thinking there must be something wrong with me, I'm not loved, whatever, you know. I was left. That's hard. It's hard to deal with. How many ever felt that way before? You know what I'm talking about. It's just hard. It hurts, man. And you know what this restaurant lady would do? She would tell me how hot I look. <laughs> and I knew she was lying, but I went with it. And she would hug me, and she wasn't coming on to me at all. She wanted me to get my head up. Now, I'm not saying she's lost. I don't know. I'm just saying, it's, it's the folks that, I mean, it's just, we need to love all people. Got it? Yes or no? We're missing a lot when we just are selective, guys. It's beautiful. Real fishing. Fishermen need to attract fish. 
How do you attract fish? And the message is over. I know y'all are leaving. Here we go. Shine your light. Next point. Let your light so shine. Shine your light. That's how you attract fish at night. That's how you do it. Share your what? Life. This talks about sharing your junk in your life. Stories, troubles, things. Let them know that you're not perfect. Let them know you've got problems. So shine your light. Share your life. And then do what? Seek the lost. Go out there looking for them. We have to go where the fish are. Now on Sunday, I'm fishing in here every Sunday. But this ain't the best fishing hole. It's one of them, but the fishing holes are all out there in this town. Amen? Instead of one fisherman, we want 500, 800, 900 fishermen. Amen? Say, that's how you build a church. Be real before others and reel them into his kingdom. Got it? Reel them in, baby. You're killing me, Raj. The principle of the Lord love people. Pop it up. The position, humble yourself. The personality, be real and genuine. Don't forget this. Shine your light. Share your life. And seek the lost. Let's praise the Lord. We have to quit. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. I like that message. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.